Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to the video. In this video, I'm going to share with you everything you need to know when you're traveling to Japan. Just a quick disclaimer though, make sure you do your own research. This is everything that was based on my experience, so it may be a little bit different for everybody. But these are the things that I noticed that are important to do for me personally. There are some things to do before you even go, so make sure you sign up for the Visit Japan web. Technically, you don't have to do this, but you should. It'll just save you time when you land, and having more paperwork will always help you. Basically, you get a QR code for filling in information, like your passport number and all of that stuff. Put in your first hotel's address with the contact information, which is a requirement. So it'll be easier to do this online and get the QR code to scan when you get into Japan versus filling it out on the piece of paper that they give you. If you don't need a visa, that's pretty much all you need. Like if you come from Canada or America, you pretty much just show up. Again, do your own research, but in my experience, that's what it is. I'm Canadian. I did the Visit Japan website QR code and then you just show up and you're good to go. Make sure your passport's not going to expire. When you land, they'll put a stamp in your passport. That'll be valid for up to 90 days. If you leave and re-enter, even if you're only coming back for one day within that period, you're going to get a whole other stamp. So just be aware of that. You can only get two stamps a year. So that means you can only come to Japan twice in a year for two 90-day periods, theoretically. Make sure your passport's not going to expire, and when you're actually in Japan, make sure you always have your passport with you. So when you're in Japan, they have something called a JR Rail Pass, which will let you ride most of the trains in the country and the Shinkansen as much as you want. Shinkansen's a high-speed train. Unless you ride about six or seven Shinkansens, it's not really going to be worth it because it's quite expensive actually. That's if you just do the 50,000 yen option for seven days. If you do the 14-day option for 80,000 yen, you need to ride about 10 Shinkansens to make it worth the price, give or take. If you're just going to Tokyo, Kyoto, and Osaka, which is a pretty standard first trip, then you don't really need the JR Rail Pass. It'll be cheaper to just buy the tickets yourself in the country. There is convenience between having the JR Rail Pass. For example, you can't really buy Suica cards right now. You can get a digital Suica card on your iPhone, but if you have a Samsung, unless the Samsung phone was made in Japan, you may not be able to actually get it. So you would have to buy the ticket individually at each and every stop, which is quite inconvenient. So if you're an Android user, then you probably want to get the JRL Pass. The JRL Pass is also still not perfect though, because there are some places you can't go with it. I'm pretty sure there's two main companies when it comes to the rail system in Japan. So the JR Rail Pass is for JR trains. It won't be for anything that's not a JR train. The JR Rail Pass won't work on the underground subway in Tokyo. It's more just for the trains going around the city. It's honestly kind of hard to figure out and it's not very intuitive once you're there because they kind of mesh together and they seem quite similar. So all you can really do is put your pass in and then hope it works, which it does 90% of the time. But then the other 10% of the time you need to use your Suica. But if you don't have a Suica because you can't buy a card or you can't physically get one at all because you have an Android phone and you can't get a digital version, then you need to buy an individual ticket for that specific stop. So that's also why the JRL Pass is not perfect. And Suica and Pasma cards Suica and Pasmo cards, by the way, are interchangeable. Like, they're a different company, I think, but they both do the same duty of letting you tap on and off of trains, making purchases at some convenience stores or vending machines. It's basically just a standard transit card at the end of the day. You do also need a SIM card. You don't necessarily need a personal phone number when you're in Japan, probably. It depends on your situation. You can do an eSIM, which is what I did because it's convenient, or you can buy one at the airport or some convenience stores. I'm not sponsored, but I did get an eSIM from Aerolo and they let me have a referral code so i'll put that code down in the link because you get a four dollar and fifty discount canadian and then i would get a four dollar and fifty cent credit on my account as well so it's good for both of us if you want to use it again not sponsored they don't really know i exist <laughs> it's more just they give this link to literally everybody who signs up so why not they have e-sims for just japan they have e-sims for asia in general for like 18 different countries or something i went to japan and Korea so I bought the general card which let me use the sim in Japan and Korea. They also 
just have one specifically for Japan. It does not include a phone number though, by the way, just so you know if that's something you need or want. So when you land in Japan, you can pre-order your SIM card if you want to, to pick it up from the airport. The airport and the JR Rail Pass, like the offices close at like 5 p.m. or so, 4 p.m. or so. If you can time your flight well, I would recommend that you try to get in Japan around 2 or 3. This will give you an hour or two to comfortably figure out your surroundings. You can go pick up the SIM card you ordered if you did that, and you can go pick up the JR Rail Pass that you ordered if you did that. The actual airport's very intuitive. Like, it's not that hard to figure out, actually, but there is also staff who can help bring you around. There's help centers, too, so you can just go up to someone who works there. And you can use Papago, which I recommend, for a translation app to Japanese. It's a Korean app, but Japanese and Korean have similar grammar, so the translation's actually very good. Of course, if you speak Japanese, that's better, but it's not necessary. You can go around Japan very easily just speaking English. If you just go up to a staff member, they very likely speak English, so they can help you. Like, they can tell you where to go get your SIM card, or they can tell you where to go get your rail pass, or where to go to the train to go to Tokyo, or to go to your hotel if you're going to stay in Narita that night. Make sure you also have travel insurance when you're in Japan. This is for literally everywhere. Just always have travel insurance. If you can afford to travel, you can afford to have the insurance. It's just not worth the risk. Spend the two or three hundred dollars it takes to get travel insurance because you never know what will happen. Especially because Japan's prone to earthquakes. Realistically, Japan's very well prepared for earthquakes though, so you probably don't have much to worry about. It's very unlikely that it would cause an issue for most people, but it does happen, so be aware of that. And you should watch videos on how to deal with earthquakes and tsunamis in Japan because they do happen. Make sure you always have your passport on you. That's a law. I'm not a lawyer. Make sure you do your own research, but but just so you know, always carry your passport on you. If a police officer asks to see your passport and you don't have it, you might have an issue. So be careful with that. Always have your passport. Also, don't spit on the ground. You can actually get arrested for that. I mean, like, it's kind of gross when people do that. So personally, I think it's a good thing, but just don't do it. It's not good. It's bad manners in general, but it's also an actual problem if you do it in Japan. So don't spit on the ground. If you ask most people like to help you with something or a question, if you can do it in Japanese, I find that they're very nice and willing to do it. But it would probably be better if you save your questions for staff because it is generally kind of, they won't tell you or they won't let you know, but it is kind of like a weird thing to just speak to random people in Japan. They get more and more used to it because of more and more tourism but it's still something that's not really a normal part of the culture. So it would be better to ask questions to staff at like a train station, which is probably where most of your questions will come up anyway. Like, is this train going here, for example? If you have absolutely no Japanese at all, and you're not really interested in learning it, you can just go up to the person at the train station and say the destination that you need to go, because the pronunciation will be pretty much the same in English. That'll pretty much get you anywhere you need to go. Also, I never experienced this personally, but I did hear from some people that at some restaurants, they'll charge more on the English menu than they do on the Japanese menu. So if you go to a restaurant, even if you don't speak Japanese, just say, Nihongo de, which means in Japanese for the menu. And then you can just use like Google Maps to translate it to English for you. That way you know you're getting the best price. Google Maps works very well in Japan. You're probably never going to really need anything other than Google Maps. It'll pretty much get you everywhere you need to go. I never had a problem in any city using Google Maps. It's perfectly acceptable and valid in Japan. The only thing you really need is a translation app and I recommend Papago. Then if you have an iPhone, consider getting a virtual Suica. If you have an Android, <laughs> that sucks. I have an Android, but I went a few years ago as well, and I was luckily able to get a Suica card, so I personally don't have the issue. But for new people who are coming, it's not very easy, unfortunately. So in the case that you can't get a Suica card, you'll have to buy tickets at each station individually. So going to very small or specific stations, it may be harder to do that because I don't really feel like every station has a kiosk where you can buy a ticket. Aside from this issue with the transit card, 
it can be very difficult if you're an Android user because you probably just will not be able to get a virtual Suica card and you cannot buy a physical Suica card. Maybe if you're lucky when you show up you'll be able to buy a card but you might just have to spend more money to get a JRL pass to be able to use almost every train or you're just going to have to buy a physical ticket each and every time and not every train station has a physical ticket. So it's actually very important to be aware of that if you're an Android user. When you show up to your hotel, the hotel staff will ask to see your passport. Maybe it seems like when you sign up, you give them a lot of information, but all hotels ask for this, so just be aware of that. They're going to take a lot of personal information at each hotel. So to give a quick recap, get your QR code from the Visit Japan website. You can consider getting a JRL pass, but you need to math out beforehand if it's going to be worth it. Just go online and Google like how much a ticket from Tokyo to Osaka and then the ticket from Osaka to Tokyo is, for example. I don't know what your trip is, it really depends, everyone will be a little bit different. You have to ride a lot of Shinkansens to actually get your money's worth for the amount of time that you're going, so just be aware of that. It's kind of actually hard to do. Of course, it is just an extremely convenient thing to have, and maybe if you have an Android phone and you cannot buy a physical Suica card, then you might feel like you have no choice but to buy this. I don't actually know if you can buy it in person. You have to order it online and then you can pick it up. So maybe if you were in Japan, you could order it online and then pick it up the next day if you needed to. Make sure you arrive in Japan. I would say no later than two, just so you're not worried or stressed. If your flight is an hour or two late, that would not be ideal but most places close around 5 at the airport so you should have enough time to be able to go and grab your sim card if you're buying a physical one and to pick up your JRL pass. If you're worried about that I would consider keeping your first hotel in Narita. There's a lot of buses to various hotels in the area from the airport to that hotel and then to come back as well. The downtown of Narita is also very beautiful so if you don't want to spend your first day there you could spend your last night there as this is assuming you're landing in Narita. I went to Narita because it's like $300 cheaper than Haneda, which is in Tokyo. Make sure you have a passport that won't expire. Always keep your passport on you. Figure out if you're going to be able to buy a physical Suica card when you land. If you can't, if you have an iPhone, you shouldn't have much of a problem. But if you have an Android, you're probably going to have to buy a JRL pass, and your trip might be a little limited if you're not able to buy physical tickets. It's actually very inconvenient if you're an Android user, unfortunately. The problem with the Android phone is the only real problem that you may encounter when traveling in Japan. It's actually a very intuitive city to go around, and Google Maps works very effectively. Just download Papago so that you can translate English to Japanese. Also get the Google Translate app so that you can use the camera to translate text from a menu or something off the wall to English if you want to read it. That's pretty much all there is to know about traveling to Japan. Like, aside from just giving recommendations on places to go, that's kind of just the nitty and gritty. Things that you should know and things that you should do before you go. I'd like to thank you for watching. I hope you have a good day. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it down below and I'll answer them. If I miss anything, let me know, and I'll make a new video in regards to that topic. Thank you. Bye-bye.